Well, Mark, with great anticipation and great trepidation, we've come to Turfontaine. We've seen Mark Khan go through his first day at the office in over eight years, and you've come out of it with a 25% strike rate. Plenty of preparation, plenty of planning, and I'm sure maybe just a few sleepless nights. Andrew, it's, uh, I'm overwhelmed. The reception has been absolutely warm. It's been wonderful, and I'm just grateful to everybody there's been a lot of people that's been behind me through this entire journey, especially my family, my wife and my two children. But nothing can prepare you for what was to unfold today. Uh, I was chatting to my wife and I said, I'm fit. And she said, yeah, we'll see tomorrow. Wow. There's nothing like a race. And I'm not talking four races, I'm just talking about a race. It's a different fitness. And I think it's all the adrenaline. The whole idea of, of race riding is completely different to gallops. I've done many gallops. I've done lots of work. I really thought I was fit. I've been proven wrong. I, I, I wasn't blowing hard afterwards, but every other part of my body was burning. Well, I think probably bears testament to the fact that Mark Khan has always regarded his body as a temple. You, you've never, ever allowed yourself to get overweight like some of your colleagues have, <laughs> but the reality is that galloping on grass is immeasurably different from galloping on, on poly track or sand track. Yes, so you know what, I've, I've been very lucky and I don't think that I've got a structure that allows me to get too heavy, but from the day that I stopped, I never wanted to pick up weight, so I watched my weight all the time and I've got a very high metabolism, so it's helped me a lot. My wife feeds me well but I've got very poor eating habits. So yes, um, I have watched my weight and try to keep as fit as possible. Right, coming to the race course, you know that you've got one horse that can definitely run a big race of Gary Alexander's for whom you've been putting in a lot of work and who's always been a supplier of good solid winners. The point is that you, you're on a first timer for Paul Matchett and uh, there's expectation, the owners are there, they seem to really love the filly. What was your take on that? I was confident, I have to be honest with you. Her work at home is phenomenal. She's an honest filly, she's professional. And I think what caught us both out was the race day occasion. She just never rose to the occasion. She stood in the gates for a very long time. And I didn't shake her up just before the last horse came in because I, I knew she had natural gate speed. But I think it was in hindsight, it was a little bit of a blessing. So the owners were there and it was lovely to meet the owner. I've never met him before. What a lovely man. And his family was there. And I'm grateful to Paul Matchett and to Gary Alexander for having the confidence in me. And she's a smart filly, guys. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't not watch her next time. But the race unfolded. And once she got left, it's very hard for a first timer to make it up. So... I wasn't able to assist her the entire journey, but by the time she got tired, so was I already. So, you know, she never got beaten far. She got beaten maybe seven or eight lengths, running sixth, which wasn't bad, but below what we expected. Well, Alston Naidu, who was doing duty on the day, came to me and he said to me, the next two races, you can actually help yourself. Absolute professional aimers. Mark Khan and Callan Murray, both of their horses will win. Obviously, a lot of work had gone on behind the scenes to make sure that Effortless was fit, ready for the occasion. Andrew, well said. Teamwork at its best. You know, Andrew Fortune is a formidable part of the team. Gary Alexander being the horseman he is. Dean, more on the administrative side, but he knows exactly what he's doing. All the owners with their support. I've got beautiful messages from Bruce and Joe Gardner. But the filly was... Not only well prepared, she had the form, Andrew, and I don't think we can argue much when it comes to form and collateral form. And I had one danger, which was in uh, the form of Waishong Mowing's horse. And when I, when I weighed up the two sets of forms and I did my collateral line, I could see that I had him beaten and I had a clear, a clear plan of action, how I was going to ride her. And the race just panned out so well for me. Um, Waishong ended up in front. I wanted to sit in a, in a position where I could give her cover. And I knew there was, there was nothing really going to come at me. And once Waishong had struck the front, uh, he went good even fractions, which is always nice. The top jockeys, 
they always seem to keep up the tempo because they know what they're doing. No disrespect to anybody. And uh, when we hit the 500, I knew I was going to win it. So it's just a matter of time when I took it up. And the beauty was with a big screen, I looked across at the 350 and I could see nothing was really coming. But the, the moment gets to you and I pulled my stick through and showed her and I just gave her a smack just, just to make sure. And going past the line, oh, I can't tell you, the feeling was unbelievable. It was, it was surreal, that's what it was. I noticed that obviously you tempered your enthusiasm to celebrate because we know that there have been jockeys who have fallen foul of the rule, that have celebrated no matter how far clear they are. Uh, there's a rule in place and being the professional you are, you adhere to that rule. Andrew, yes I did. Thank you for picking that up. Yeah, there are rules. I didn't need to be in the boardroom for, for my first winning ride. It's amazing because when I got to the course, I went to the boardroom to greet all the stipes and just to reintroduce myself again and say thank you. And uh, they said to me, we don't want you back here later. I said, no, that's why I came now, just to say hello. And that's the last you're going to see of me today. 400 meters left to go. Diva Faustina, one length in front of Effortless in the black body. Piccadilly Square is on the chase in the middle of the course. Lana Turner is next best. Diva Faustina visits the inside. Effortless drifts towards the outside, but these two are clear. But it's Effortless in front under Mark Kahn. And Effortless, two lengths to the good over Piccadilly Square. Effortless wins. Mark Kahn's back. Obviously, I got back and I absorbed the moment and I loved the moment. And the guys were, the guys were just wonderful. My heart really yesterday was in a very sad place because of the loss of Alec Forbes, which I had to deal with because he was a very special friend to me. He was very much of an introverted character. I was the best man at his wedding and he meant a lot to me. You know, we spoke on the phone not as often as I'd like to, but we kept in touch. So it was a bittersweet kind of a day. And then my next two rides, I also quietly fancied because I'm the eternal optimist. And even though Gary's Philly had fair form. I fancied her to run into the top four. Um, it never worked out that way. And by the time I got to my fourth ride, funny Andrew, I had had so many understandings of what I need to do and so many flashbacks of, of where I am. So the jockey you saw yesterday is a real comeback jockey in terms of I need to still be, I need to be as polished as I was eight years ago and I just need to take it one step at a time and I know I'll get there. I've got to go scratching the old folders now and, and, and just try and get my way back in. Well, the interview that we did after races yesterday uh, was an interview that was conducted in a very spontaneous manner and we both agreed that it would be pertinent to have a night to sleep on it, to reflect on what happens in the media. Obviously, I've had a chance to observe uh, some of the celebrations that have been uh, associated with your with your victory, but also the naysayers and the people that are perhaps jealous, the people that have possibly challenged your decision to come back to race riding. I suppose, uh, once again, an analogy is a, a world-class celebrity like Ivan Lendl getting a, a 40 million US dollar payout, which was an awful lot of money, but with specific clauses preventing him from going to play professional tennis, uh, Penalties associated with the refund of the whole amount of money and interest and obviously there were clauses in your insurance policy that you had to pay very careful attention to. Yes, Andrew, and I think you've said it time and time again. I've, I, I give many things lots of thought. My wife and I discuss things at length. So this eight years, I haven't been doing nothing. I've been continuously rehabilitating and We've sorted everything out with the insurance companies. The very insurance company that gave me the payout is the very insurance company I approached first, if they would reinsure me. And they said, no, we're not interested, and I accepted it, and I moved on, and we eventually found a company that was prepared to insure us in compliance with what the NHRA needed. Uh, that was a lengthy process, and I have a high respect for the NHRA because they are absolutely professional and thorough with what they do. So when it comes to insurance and medical aid and covering all the bases, I've rehabilitated. I feel great to be back and I feel blessed by God to be back. So to all the people that are out there asking these questions or wanting to know 
all the answers. I hope I've nutshelled it for them that we've complied with everything that we had to do and it wasn't a matter of applying today and getting your license tomorrow. The NHA was completely and utterly thorough with the investigation. Well, my final question to you, Mark, is that life is full of miracles, particularly when you have faith. And I'm sure that the last time you undid your saddle, maybe unwittingly so, not knowing that that would be your last ride of your professional career until such time as you returned yesterday, you must have thought to yourself, well, it'll take a miracle to bring me back. Andrew, you're saying so many pertinent things today and I'm getting goosebumps. I never, ever thought that I could make a return because at that time things were looking rather bleak. God is amazing and I can proudly say that and my journey with uh, the Lord in the last couple of years has really been huge and a lot of my friends call me Pastor and I just laugh at them. This for me is an absolute miracle. I'm just blessed and I can truly say I know what it is to be privileged to have been awarded a license again as a professional sports person, in this case a jockey. But it's effortless in front under Mark Khan and effortless two lengths to the good over Piccadilly Square. Effortless wins, Mark Khan's back.